Well, thank you. I didn't know we were going to play that. That was, that was awesome. The, uh, I was a little bit nervous about coming up here and talking, but I'm more nervous about the slideshow. So I uh, want to hope this clicker works properly. The, um, I, I, uh, it's humbling to be back here. I, I wanted to, um, you know, I walked in here five years ago not knowing what I was coming to. Uh, the, the, this event has, has really changed my life, and, and I, I love the topic that we're speaking about today. This is actually on the entry glass to our office, and we have it written in 17 different languages, all the different languages of the people that we've employed, and a lot of them are handwritten, um, but it's, it's really a welcoming tool that we've used uh, to, to bring people um, through the doors the right way. You know, I, uh, I, Joel, Joel was teasing me a little bit yesterday, not intentionally, but I'm about to share my story. And if I can do this, anybody can. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. Um, and before I get started, I, I, I wanted to, I kind of like to know what my audience looks like. And, and I didn't, how, how many of you own businesses here that are, that are in the room? And then, and then how, ma how many of you are in the ministry that are in the room? because it should be all the same hands. I want, I want you to not, not to miss the trick question, okay? Um, what I didn't realize five years ago is that I had a missions field standing outside of my door, and, and you all do that. that, that that's, that's why you were here. Um, also, it was, it was humbling when she approached me. I was at the Colorado Prayer Luncheon two years ago, and she had seen another video that was done on our business and, and asked us to be on CBN. It was more of a refugee story, and I, and I want to make it clear that the story I'm about to share, this isn't a refugee story. This is a God story. This is a, what God did through me and continues to do and through my wife and my family, and we do employ refugees. It has been something that the Lord has brought to us, but it's not our story, and, and, and I, I really hope that I can articulate that well today. When people ask me what I do, and sorry to put you through another video, um, but I, I, I'll start to tell you what I do, but I really consider myself in the people business. I, I really believe that. I believe that the people that are in front of me are what I'm about and, and the people that I, that I, that I shepherd. And, and uh, my son did all the photography and the video that we're about to watch. So I just, uh, I'm planning on taking you on a field trip for the next 30 minutes, if, if you will. And, and uh, go ahead and play this for me, if you would. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good At LR Palette, we're in the people business. Hi, my name's Rich. I'm Sam. My name is Maria. My name is Silver. I'm a truck driver for LNR. The dispatcher and our driver. I'm the pilot. I'm an effort for team. The maintenance department. I'm my manager. I run a public. I love my job. I've worked a lot of companies. There is the best company I've ever worked for. It's completely backwards here. It's what we can do for the employees. Oh, it's a lot different. Thinking about the employees first. They really care about your family. Loving the employees. They take care of their employees very, very well. They make a person want to come to work. There's a lot of pride in this business. LMI is like a family to me. It's not familia, claro. So a family-oriented place. Pretty, pretty tight group. From office-wise, drivers. People in the warehouse, they all the time look out for each other. Somebody supports you, you got any questions, everybody's there for you. We treat each other like a family, brothers, friends. Nobody above nobody. There's no screaming and aggressiveness. It's like a family. One word, family. Familia. Hey, Karen. Kibo Pablo. Nepali, Borua. There's a lot of love here. It's a great place to work. Other places that have worked. The managers are kind of on an island and have to figure out things on their own. A bigger company, they teach you as a number, not an employee. Our culture is very good, very different than other companies. They know you by name. Instead of our goals, our production, our shipping, our units sold, not that those things aren't important because we're highly focused on them, but in the scheme of things, the employees 
are in fact more important. That's something I've never seen. I like how they do it here. This is a good thing. It's different. You like other places don't really have a culture. Lots of different points of view here. Everybody is from different walks of life. Because there's a lot of different nationalities working here. Everybody's welcome. Welcome to Illinois. Everybody's the same. Everybody's a person. Whatever you're going through, work, personal. You have that support. Honestly, it's been probably the greatest honor of my life to work here. Build, serve, and impact. That's our motto. I love to walk together. Everybody stands together. We go to serve. It, it's miraculous. It can change life. Build, serve, and impact. That's one of the best things I've heard anybody or any company say. Something I've never been a part of before. I, there's, there's always something good that you can expect. Elena is number uno, number one. I love this company. I love Elena. Build, Build serve, serve, impact. I want to say thank you to this company. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Elena and our pilot working to build up each individual to be the best they can be. And that impacts you from here all the way to home. One, two, three, Bill, sir, be back! <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I, I know it's a little difficult to hear some of it. Um, the point of it, that was done without me knowing about it. And, you know, as a business owner, the pride in your employees speaking over you is, is, is something I think that we all desire and, and it doesn't just happen. You know, that's, that's the point. Um, you know, it was, it, it's been a journey. Uh, I, I wanted to take a minute before we, you know, we talk about results to, to, to thank the woman that stands behind me. I was jealous of Ben's slide. He had his whole family up there, but the, you know, with, without her beside me through all the I mean, we've been doing this for 25 years, and in the last five years, the transformation that we've gone through, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the, the voice of reason behind me and beside me, and, and just wanted to publicly thank her for, for, for what she's done. The, um, also wanted really quickly just to, to thank Bob Benson and Craig. Like, it's an honor to be up here. I don't feel like I should be up here. I, uh, you know, I, I wandered in here five years ago because you guys opened a door to make this possible. Um, and I just want to commend you because there's so many people that don't do anything and you're doing it. Um, I mean, I just, I appreciate it. It can always be different. It can always have, but, you, but you're doing it, you know? And, and, and I wouldn't be in the place I was today if I didn't come through those doors and hear a truth that was spoken. And so, to, you know, today I just, we have, to you guys. I also wanted to just thank my teachers who are the faces that you're going to see in these slides. You know, I, I went through some steps, but I've learned so many things from my employees who have um, caused me to slow down, have caused me to change my agenda and to change some of the things that I was trying to do. And, and I really, without all the people that were on that last presentation, um, there wouldn't be much to talk about. And so I, I, I've really gained a lot from them. You know, I, this, there's lots of different ways to get to know your employees. And, and one of the things that you may hear in the theme today is this getting to know your employees with a capital K, as, as Adrian often says, who's my culture director. You know, I, I, I loved connecting with, with Joel. And, and, and when I saw this, uh, you know, saw him on Undercover Bosses, I, I thought that that is a creative way for any of us to, to, in, to connect with our employees or to, you know, to come in under the radar. I, I made a slide and I wanted to make sure you understood why it would be difficult for me to do Undercover Bosses. Um, one of the reasons being, and, and I, I put some arrows on the slides to help you pick me out, um, but the, I'm, I'm the bigger guy in the pictures, and um, I don't think that I could go up without them knowing who I was. So um, the encouragement through that is find a way, find a way to connect with your people, um, but going in disguise, there's nothing that could cover me up. The, um, you know what I'm what I'm really here today to do is to is is to tell our story. Um, you know to encourage those of you in the audience that 
that might think it's too hard, too difficult. My heart is to come alongside anybody in Colorado, which, you know, I can't, I, I hope you'll see how excited I am, but if I can ignite something in you, you know, I, I, it's God's job to prepare your heart. Um, my job is to just come alongside you if you're interested in taking that journey. And I would really, as, as, as Bob Benson wants to do, just look into to unite this state. I mean, and, and what we're seeing in Northern Colorado, Southern Colorado, and, and, and being a part of that really excites me. But just real quickly, uh, Pallets 101, I hate being in front of anybody, I'm not knowing what a pallet is, okay? Um, it's just this wooden platform, not the ones on Pinterest that are wine racks, okay? We, we were doing this long before it was cool, and um, we currently distribute, um, remanufacture and manufacture about 10,000 units per day, and um, you know, ship them all over, but it's just one of those unseen widgets that uh, is in every part of uh, the process, especially uh, in the days of Amazon and, and large distribution. Some fun facts, um, family business. We started, my parents started the company in Denver, Colorado in 1974. I've never worked anywhere else. I've never been employed anywhere else. I ran from it, as a lot of kids do, trying to go to college and do something else, and decided I got a good thing going here. My wife and I were married in 93. We both joined the business full time in 94. I have 130 families working for us currently. And, and I say that critically it's not 130 team members or family members. There's 700 people that we employ behind that 130. It's a, it's a massive congregation, if you will. That's my church. Um, I wandered into this building in 2013 when Paul Cuny spoke, and you know, I, I think he wrote that book just for me. I didn't know if it was for anybody else, but that day I had so many freedoms created in my life when I read the words that he put in pap on paper about you know, this, this business not belonging to me, that it, it, it wasn't mine to carry the burden, and it wasn't mine to crack the nut every day. Um, I just come out of a massive financial situation in 2010 where we had, we had been bezeled from. I no longer trusted people. We about lost it all. Housing, schooling, you name it. My wife stands behind me, continuing to tell me that it's gonna be okay, God's got this. Me, I'm gonna fix it. Um, working through that process, I kind of gave up in 2012. And uh, I didn't know what I was hungry for when I came through these doors, and, and you might not know what you're hungry for today either. It started with a missions trip that she took to Peru um, in, in 2012. I didn't have time for missions trips, that wasn't for me. I had to run a business, I had to fix a business. The PL was my baby. She came home and she wouldn't shut up. She said, you got to go. Um, I went back in 2012 at the end of that year, and these two little girls up in the left-hand corner with that young boy came through the, the crowd and touched me on the arm, and electricity ran through my body. And I, I, I didn't know at the time what that meant. I thought I was supposed to adopt those two little girls, but God grabbed me that day. Didn't need me to do anything because I thought he needed me to do something. He needed me to call me into action. I think he just needed to shake me really hard. Um, and, and, and he wanted to get a hold of my life. And, and um, I don't call them missions trips. I'll use the word mission sometimes today, but I don't call them missions trips. They're vision trips. When you go on a vision, you might share in a vision with a ministry that's somewhere. But God's got a m m mission for you. And he'll share his vision for you if you allow him. And, and I know that that's what happened to me that day. This Bible verse was so critical. Out of Ezekiel, if it's, um, which, yeah, it showed up. The, 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 the Lord that day, that moment, took my heart and changed it from stone and softened it. And I didn't know what he was going to do with that over the next few years. But uh, I, I, that's something I would encourage each and every one of you to pray for. Because when that happens, it's crazy what can take place. You know, Paul, last year um, after his conference, I mean, this, this, this small quote really stuck out in my mind because I was trying to coin where I was at. And I don't know if you can be sick of your situation, tired of your situation, but when you, are dis when you reach a point of discontent in your situation, 
That's when God's revelation comes. And I know that that's where I was. That was the button I was pushing in 2012 and 2013 when, when all of these things started to align. And um, I just knew that I wasn't going to do things the same way I had done them. I, I didn't know. I had a culture, but I didn't know that that's actually what I was trying to change. I just wanted to do the right thing. I wanted to get the right people around me. I was, you know, very organically coming to this as, as God wrapped his arms around me. The... The, the, you know, I, I ask people, what, what solution or mission has God brought you? W when I go back to saying this isn't a refugee story, it's because I've had people come to me and like, well, I don't have refugees. I don't have that issue, so I can't relate. It's going to look different for each and every one of you. I don't know what his solution is for your situation. For me, that's what he gave me for my purpose and for my, for my growth. It's what he used to teach me things. And, you know, I, th this photograph is so strong to me because it represents a man or a woman inside this work helmet with their hands inside those gloves that are out there under my watch, you know, that are out there performing some purpose, some function for us at our company. And I do know that when I started to see people and I wasn't looking at people, and that, and that was actually my approach to it. I want to see you. I want to see, I want to know more about you. Again, the, the no word. Um, that's when we really started getting penetration at LNR Palette with a shift that, that we may or may not have looked for. The next picture is a very extreme representation of what impacted me. But when I talk about getting to know your team, there's all different kinds of levels. My employees, came into the office, came into work, had red marks on their arms, didn't know what it was, found out it was bed bugs. Started, immediately made availability on my leadership team after work every day to leave early and go home with employees and start to, to, to go into their homes and fumigate. And we'd see stuff like this. Um, and and it, it made me realize this guy's sleeping on the floor, he's got his, his, his bag of food on the wall um, you know, and here I am, Monday morning, wanting this guy to be on time, with a smile, ready to perform, and give me all the things all the, that are going to meet all my metrics of reaching production numbers and, and whatnot. Um, you know, it, it doesn't get more basic than that. Shame on me, right? Um, what I soon learned is it wasn't just them. That, that, that's an extreme but that every single employee that walks through my door, every single vendor, every single person I interact with, they got baggage, they got stuff, you know? And, and here I was somehow thinking I could ask them to leave that outside, you know, and, and God really put it on my heart. You know, all, every one of you in this room has got a jacked up situation, I am sure of it. You've got baggage, you got stuff, you got a family member. And it just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. You know, this is, the, it's, not, it's not me and my management team taking care of those refugees. It's, it's all of us. Like, I have this responsibility for everybody under my influence to, to try to help them. And, and the luggage deal is, is, is a big deal because, um, you know, Ben spoke earlier uh, back in, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, you left your baggage outside and, and I can't ask them to leave their baggage at the flagpole. I can't ask them to leave it outside. I, I, we bring it in and we ask them to unpack it and we try to help them with whatever we can inside that bag so that they can ultimately become a better person, ultimately take that burden off of them. They're gonna be a better employee. That's the benefit. They're gonna be committed, but you start to get to know them because you asked. I wanna know what your needs are and what your problems are. And I didn't learn that in a book. It was just on my heart to do it. Um, to, 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 to give you a quick, when people ask me, like, the, the, what, what's going on in the LNR family, you know, I, I want to give you, just to try to give you a quick synopsis of where we have arrived at. We have not arrived. I have so many HR issues. Do not think that I'm standing up here without any. Um, my turnover is very, very low, though. Um, we, we've got 31 people getting ready to have a five-year anniversary, which is just crazy to me, going back to about when this cycle started five years ago. But the, uh, 
You know, I, I, I have days at work that aren't so great. I don't know if you can recognize this picture, but that is not the way a truck sits on the road, okay? Um, this, is, this, this was an example last October, and um, I think I was getting my hair cut when I got that phone call, and I was just glad that nobody was sitting in those benches. That was, that was the biggest blessing that could have happened that day. Nobody was hurt. But what it started to do, I, I, I couldn't quite get my mind around. The, we sent about 18 guys out to do highway cleanup. This was out on I-70 and Tower Road on the east side of the, uh, town. Um, impressed CDOT with the quickest cleanup they said they'd seen in quite some time. And, and um, the truck was hauled back to my facility and sat there all week long in the parking lot for all the employees to see it, not intentionally, just it's, it's what happened. And, and the week was pretty rough for James Reuter. The, uh, had a couple managers come tell me they were gonna go work for Amazon, loved these guys, you know, sent them off with prayer. Um, was totally bummed out. Had my two boys out at the office on a Friday and um, was taking mattresses to a few of our employees that afternoon because I wanted to show my boys what the living conditions were like of some of our employees. And I'm doing it with zero joy in my heart, like none. You know, I'm, I'm faking it. Uh, just been kind of a sucky week, um, but still, you know, still doing it. And I get, I get back to my office and it, it's one o'clock in the afternoon and, and uh, my plant manager comes in. He's like, boss, you got to come outside. He goes, you got to come out right now. The guys want to thank you. And I'm like, I thought it was the guys with the mattresses. I'm like, no, forget, just tell them I'm glad they got the mattresses. I love them. Um, he's like, no, you got to come outside and, and you can't say no. You, you're going to give you something. You can't say no. And I said, please tell me they didn't cook me anything because I do not want to eat their food. It was like, it was a big terrifying thing for me. But um, he takes me outside and the entire plant has shut down and this isn't the right angle, but they are in a big semicircle and they start to, two people come up. One was a gentleman that we've helped to get out of. Um, he came out of prison, had barriers to employment, and his life has just been changed. And one of my interpreters, and, and they started to speak over me and to thank me for the work environment that I had created, for the things that I do that go beyond the norm. Um, I don't know what they said, to be honest with you, because I was kind of a mess. And, you know, they, they all wanted to gather around and take a big picture. And, but what broke my heart, and it's something that Joel spoke about earlier, which is, is super cool. When you know something's from God, it's because you start to do it, and then you see it somewhere else happening. Um, Joel, Joel talked about a giving foundation that they created within the company that he was working for. I started the same thing. And these guys came up to me that day and handed me an envelope with $237 in it, cash, and handed it to me. And they just said, boss, you've taught us how to give. We love you, and we want to help fix your truck. And it might have been, you might as well have given me $100,000, you know, because it just, it, it just absolutely blew my mind. But it, it did. It started with a simple care fund that we created where an employee puts in $1. And if they put in a dollar, they're eligible to be a recipient of the fund that we create. And we did that to, to, to find out about basic needs. I don't have time to talk about all of the programs that we have in place, but I wanted to teach my employees how to look into each other's lives. And when we started this fund, we were small enough that they started to learn that they've all got stuff. They started to see what the other guy needs and, and they started to know that maybe his needs greater than mine and they started to organically decide who got the funds that were available when people needed them. And it was, it was the coolest thing. And so to be the guy that day that I got the money, the employees gave me their money, it was the most humbling experience. I, I just, I can't even tell you because I spent years running a business where people sat out there and thought I was in my office trying to figure out how to take advantage of them, how to screw them out of their money. And here they're handing me their money. And, and I, I, it was this magical moment a year ago that I, I knew that we had finally gotten somewhere. And, you know, and it, it, it starts by um, just somehow building community. The, the, the point is it's gonna, it's gonna look different for each one of you. But figuring out how to build community, I mean, Jesus is in all of this, but it really starts with some basics that I'm going to encourage you not to overcomplicate. 
building community, getting to know your people and creating connections, however it works for you in your job place. But feelings of respect and trust are gonna come first through their supervisors. And I, I, I say that from the fact that you as an owner can want this, but until you've stewarded your leadership team and your leadership can deliver it to the team below them, that's when you get the trust of the entry, way, or entry level worker. And I would have to tell you that nobody shows up at LNR Pallet because they were born dreaming about becoming a pallet repair operator, okay? They come, they come to my business looking for work and I've discovered that there's so many more things that I can give them um, besides just a job. You know, this, what, what we've done is it's time consuming, um, it's messy, it's, it's, it's not easy and there's, there's really no template the advice you were given today from Joel and Ben, though, are amazing. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, when, when I found Joel's book, and, and he so perfectly articulated how to love, you know, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm not a marshmallow, I'm not a soft guy, or didn't used to be, maybe I'm becoming one, but this, this love that we talk about, it, it's, it's a stern love. It's a, it's a love my kids. I, I don't run a, a mission uh, emissions that accepts poor quality or poor performance. Um, you know, I, I expect the best out of people. And, you know, I, I, just knowing though that just your action is, is such a big part of the impact that you can have. I also, I sit up here and I tell you about this five-year journey I've been on, and that seems like such a long time but I can tell you that we immediately had impact with the changes that we did and the things that we put in place. And I wanna make sure that none of you leave discouraged for any reason that, or, or, or tell yourself the lie that you can't do something because you can immediately put something in place that makes a difference to somebody and will also encourage you and help you keep on the journey to do things. Uh, to be intentional with your love is to share the purpose and the mission and your core values with your team. And you don't have to create those. Those should be something that you already are. I didn't even put mine into words until the last year, even though we started this process. Finding ways to connect with your team, allowing your team to have a voice when they say something, don't ignore it. You may not always go that direction or agree with it, but, but creating an opportunity for them to have a voice. But developing your leaders because, you, again, you cannot do any of this without your leadership team. And holding everybody accountable. When you decide to do this, if you've been doing it differently, your leadership team will not get in the same boat you are instantly. I've had to let people go that worked for me for seven or eight years. I was able to save somebody that worked for me for 22 years after three very difficult situations that I included his wife in because it, it's gonna, this is gonna affect your family if we don't figure this out. You're not gonna be working here anymore. I love you, I need you to do it this way now. Um, you know, but just when we talk about celebrating things, we celebrate everything. If any of you have an opportunity to meet Adrian today, she, she's my culture and care director, she thinks there's an award for everything. I don't know, it's a, it's a generational thing, but, um, but we have just, we, we just celebrate everything which gives people recognition, which gives people value, which, which helps them understand that they're a part of something. And, and you know, there, you, if, if you can have a cupcake with it, you can celebrate it. It's, it's, it's really that easy. You know, um, our, our, our house rules, which are our core values, but we kind of make it cool. Um, you know, excellence, honesty, courage, and love. And, and I actually had to sit down with my team and they convinced me that love is a word that fit in there, which is, it, which is awesome because I didn't know that it had a place until we really talked about who we are and what we're doing and what we're already doing. And it was very easy. The words, the words courage, courage and honesty, God gave me those just in asking me to be bold, which is part of being on this stage. I am not a speaker. I make pallets. Um, you know, and, and, and just being bold in anything that God asks me to do and, and acting with integrity. But the, if there's any lesson to learn, if you start to try to do any of this in your business, even as the leader, just trying to get to your leadership team is, is a lot less talk and more action. Don't try to do it all on paper and make it official and stick it on the wall and say that's who we are. Be who you are, who you want to be. Expect your leadership team to do it. Expect 
the people below them to do it. And, you know, just, just display that to your people. It, 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 it's when they're going to do know that you're serious about it. I don't know how many lobbies I've sat on and seen something in the wall and it's like, that's not who I met with today. That, that's not who they were. You know, we, we, we are about people and pallets is what we do that helps fund this, this engine that we operate. But, um, you know, just, just having purpose. And, and the, the gentleman on the right has been working with us for 42 years, so I, I had to include him in my slideshow. He's, he's our, one of our first employees ever, but I think Joel did a great job of, this is a quote from his book, where it just says, it's not okay to achieve profit growth and destroy our culture as a great place to work for great people. It's also not okay to focus on being a great place to work without achieving our financial objectives. This is a tension to embrace, not eliminate. The point about that quote is that we started to err on the side of we're trying to do so many good things, the company was struggling. We're, we're trying to be such a, a place of refuge to people of all kinds of situations that we weren't being productive. You have to be productive. You have to be excellent. You have to be the best of the best of what you're doing. And I, and I think it's an important point to know that that's always a a place of discussion. When I, when I look at my team, you know, again, not being a refugee story, there were some pictures in the beginning of my slideshow that showed all these faces. And, and I go in there and, and I look at that and, and I pray for those people, but it's kind of like my, my roster. I feel like I won the Super Bowl last fall and we're playing again for the game this year. And you might have been one of my starters last year. And, and I know that sounds cruel, but the what I mean by it is when you love your people this way, you're going to hold them to a certain accountability. They're going to decide if they're going to play or not. They're going to decide if they want to be part of your team. And I want them to be part of the team if, if they're playing the game that we're playing. But I want to be excellent and I want to be great. And I expect that out of my staff. You know, our, 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 our mission statement is simple. And I stole it from the beaten bows that were, have spoke here a couple times. I think when something's from the Lord, you don't have to reinvent it. Um, I want it simple. But, you know, we, we, we build pallets, we build people. Whatever you're going to do with your hands, do it to the best of your ability. We serve our customers. We serve each other. You know, these are, these are principles that I can teach my employees that they can be a part of, that they can be excited about, that they can know where we're going, and that they can feel like they understand what we're doing. But then, you know, impacting our industry, impacting the city, um, impacting each other's lives. It's, it's just gotten everybody so excited about what's happening in our company. And but the most important thing is, you know, that we, my leadership team, we lead by example. Um, you know, it's, it's pretty humbling when you get pictures like this sent to you from your team, um, whether it's a spontaneous or non-spontaneous event, uh, but these are just happening out on our floor in our production area. And, and the freedom that we've created to do that has been amazing. Uh, and, and in fact, if there's anybody that asks you what you can and can't do in a business, um, don't ask me because I'll do it all. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm pretty radical for Jesus right now. The, uh, the, the, I, I, t I took these words from my buddy Steve last week, but you know, to, to do this, you have to be humble. And I hope I come across as a humble person. Um, I am proud of what we've done, but I have not done this. God has done this through me, through my team, and just, I, I just surrendered and, and I quit trying to do it on my own, but I was hungry. I was so hungry for something different. I was so hungry for change and I wanted it more than anything. I would fire customers. I, I, will, I will not work with any customer that treats us bad. I'm not about the dollar. And when you can start to prove that you're not about the dollar to your people and that they're in front of it, you get some serious buy-in. And, and I, you know, I asked the question at the beginning, or I think I did, can you actually put your people first? Can you put your employee first? I mean, it's just a question you have to ask yourself. And it's, it's, it's something that I wanted, and, and, and you'd be smart about it. But when does the Jesus piece come into it? Well, I hope you understand it's threaded through that entire, everything I just showed you, God's all through it. But we tell people about Jesus when they ask, you know. Um, when they come up to me and like, why, why is it different here, boss? 
why are you to do that? Why? You know, that, well, that's, that's the opportunity. You want to know why? That, that, and that's when you get it. And, and, and it's God's job to pave that path. It's mine to be ready uh, at the time. So um, I just want to know, you know, what's, if there's anything that's stopping you, if, if there's doubt, if there's, if there's questions that, that are in your life that if, you're, if you start asking all the what ifs, can you do that? Can you do that legally? Are you going to get away with it? I found people doing that, really searching for the reason not to do this. They weren't really asking me, you know, it was, it was a what if I get in trouble, but it, they're just really looking for a reason not to do it. it uh, it's going to take you to make it happen, you know. It's going to take you as a leader in the organization uh, with, with, with God's hand in the deal. You know, what are you supposed to be? What if, you're, what if your greatest fear was actually disobedience to God's plan because that's what he's called us off all to do? The, I, I, I break some things down to simplicity and I like this picture because of the toy truck in front of what I think is my world. And you know, I, I wanna encourage you guys not to complicate things, just to start with something, to start with something simple. You know, and I, I carry this ugly little bag around in my briefcase. And if you come by and visit me, you will um, see it on my desk. And it's a, it's a constant reminder to me. What this is, is my, my mom made this for me in kindergarten. It's a, it's a homemade crayon bag, which I'm sure I had drapes and a shirt to match. Because um, mom sewed. But, um, you know, I, I think about God's plan and, and I think about my plan. And it's, it's so easy for us to leave this event and and go back to our office and we want to take our plan and we want to like, you know what, God, I'm going to invite you into my plan. And, and what I realized is, is he's got this amazing plan and, and the best I can do is scribble on it with my crayons. And, and when I talked in my video earlier about the Lord kissing me on the forehead, it's, it's just this, I, I just want to climb up in his lap and scribble and as he, as he laughs at me, oh, that's cute, James, you know, um, but let's do it, let's do my plan. And, and, and I just ask you guys, you know, submit to that. Do not overcomplicate it. Your Lord just wants to come alongside you and be a part of what you're doing. The, uh, this, this, this picture just strikes me because it just, it, it, it really catches the spirit of what's been going on at my company. And, and, I, and, and when God calls you to do this, he equips you. There's nothing special about me. Um, you know, I've learned that the missions, uh, people in missions, there's nothing special about them. They've just been willing to go. And he's going to give you everything that, that you need to do the job and to go the course. And, and Bob's done a great job of creating this environment, the tools and the resources. There's people here that are that they're available, and, and, and I'm available as well. But um, that's, that's, that's a glimpse of what we've got going on. And I just thank you for the opportunity to be here. And I encourage you to move forward on your own, on your own journey. All right? Thank you.